<laughs> okay, hello from me again. Um, it's uh, I don't know how like strongly or loosely connected with my topic today here with IoT dashboard, but for a few uh, day uh, for a, like for the past two months or something, I've been working on developing a dashboard uh, which would actually help you to notice about how your APIs are doing, what are their usage, if you are having any problems on that. And today I kind of like Google to see what is IoT dashboard, and then they gave me an image about their monitoring a CD service with its weather or something. And I thought that, yeah, maybe something similar to that. Probably I'll be, I've been thinking about or developing the concept. So let's start with this thing. Uh, so people often confuse with like what is can what can be a dashboard and what can be an analytics uh, to me with my own thesis was also about it like dashboard visualization and their user experience and from there I kind of like gathered this idea that dashboard should be something that gives you the most important or crucial informations which will actually help you to achieve like uh, one or few goals that you have in your in your mind and here we are talking about API management so as an API owner or maybe an organization manager who deals with APIs or even a site admin you might need to know their system status or like how they are doing or even details uh, detail information so for that you need both a dashboard and an analytics view so the analytics are kind of like with that what the additional information is given on like maybe list of products or like uh, uh the more detailed information about how many users are actually using your api or how many calls they are making so to dig deep into that thing and one thing i want to clarify you that kind of like talking with users and with my thesis i came to understand that dashboard is not only the solution that you know that uh, to fix up your APIs. It will only let you know that if things are working, if things are working well, and those information, and then you need to like take up on yourself to actually keep your API alive and healthy and stuff like that. So let's move forward. So I was designing the, as I told, I was designing a dashboard for API management. So I came to think about what can be the possible stakeholders. So I came out with API owner, an organization manager, as I talked before, and maybe a site admin. So if we think about what are their needs or what goals they wish to achieve with their APIs or API management, I try to classify them based on the stakeholders. If we think about API owners, they want to know that if their API is up and running, based on the dashboard information, or even if a simple thing that your API is slow or it's down, it's helpful for them because their API might be used by lots of consumers and he might uh, apps might be running on them and he is generating revenue from them. So he can't really, uh, he can really uh, look, uh, like make it happen that it's down or something uh, bad is going on with it. And then maybe to, think about to see the trends in anomalies, like if there are too few calls or too many calls, what might be their reason? Or even why if there is like, there is this uh, spike in change in response time. And just to predict that if his users are happy, are they using more or just making random calls to see how the API works or just test running it? Then comes an organization manager who can either build or develop his own API or is in a corporation or, or, or a company who develops API and he is looking, he is taking care of them or leading the development team. So her primary focus is that if everything, if all the APIs under her supervision are going well, just a quick, uh, just a quick uh, notification or just a quick glance, or maybe if, if her company is like, has developed a new API and it's on production and he wants and she wants to see what is the usage trend over there, how it is performing. She might want to closely monitor that one. 
and also with that comes with possible revenue generation possibilities that how they, she can use these uh, APIs to monetize her business. And then comes the last uh, stakeholder, which can be a site admin who is in charge of managing and taking care of an <laughs> API management platform that she, uh, he actually sees that if, uh, if the APIs users are like based on the quotation, or usage scheme allocated to both API users or consumers. If there is any rude activities or any operations or firefighting works he needs to do in order to make the APIs up and running or like making the site functional. So from these uh, needs, we also came, uh, we also kind of uh, try to think about both, both RESTful APIs and real-time APIs and whether dashboards should really uh, focus on these things. I guess yes, because they, well, the way they function is different. REST API is based on sending client requests and getting server replies based on JSON, XML, or YAML. And in real time API, the server is always open, kind of like WebSocket, and it always sends you and uh, and responds whenever there is an update. And pro also there uh, there matters if what type of proxy you are using to connect your API to get all the analytics data or other stuff because they function different for different APIs. If you connect your API to a RESTful proxy like API Umbrella, you will get a set of different data, which can be uh, intercrossing, but they are different on their own. And same happens with uh, something like EMQ Broker. And then from those proxies, the information or key performance indicators or KPIs in short you get, they would be different when you are representing those data in dashboard. Like, example, from RESTful APIs, you might get information like request number, response times, and users, or even from a broker like EMQ, you can get like how many clients are actively connected over there, how many messages are going in and out, and maybe the band bandwidth utilization of each clients. So based on my uh, our primary work and user interviews, we came out with uh, one this simple prototype of dashboard and currently uh, we focused on with RESTful APIs. So it's just a simple table where you get to see if you are an API owner and you have multiple APIs that you have uh, that you see your APIs in uh, your APIs in a list, and they and they either can appear as like response time or like number of calls the way you want to uh, uh, sort the lists over there. And they also shows you a trend by week uh, by last seven days, or it can be also uh, customized based on last uh, last hours or last month. It's up to you by what timeline you want to see the information. And then it also shows you a simple uh, overview about the changes in trend. Like as for example, you can see that there is one API called App Infuser API, which had got like 54,000 calls, in the, uh, uh, which is like 11% higher than the last seven days. And even like for App Inf Catalog API, the response time is higher, which is like 200 milliseconds, which is like perhaps 25% higher than uh, the last seven days. So this gives you like things to concern or, think, or like to give uh, to to like give it an attention that you should ne really need to take up, take care about it. And then when you click like a specific. Uh, a row of the table. If you are more interested about the usage of trends, you get to see those information reflected in bigger fonts and maybe a trend chart to give you the information that how the how the uh, uh, the API costs have been for the last seven days and what proxy API uh, pro proxy it is using. If the connected endpoint to the proxy is live. How many, uh, some happy information like there have been two XX uh, or successful API responses, which is like 50,000, quite good, I would say. And maybe a small information about errors, or there have been like 24 errors in the last seven uh, days. And we talked about like more detail 
information when you want to deep down about the reasons then you can click on show more details and then we give you the analytics view um sorry for the small thank you i'm sorry for the small picture but you can see that we <laughs> Uh, in addition for the trends repeated in the previous page, we are showing the request timeline in bigger charts, also the response timeline and a list of problems which are proxy data represented in a good way or user-friendly way and maybe more most frequent users who like been using it. You want to like make it bigger or? Mm -hmm. I think we can skip this part or like really yeah because like i would be showing now all right okay thank you <laughs> so like to give like uh some glimpse of the elements in this page there is like the overview information reflected and you can see that it's also giving you additional information about the uh, 2xs, 3xs, 4xs, and 5xs calls in case you want more details about what is going on with your API. And then maybe if your API has like more than one endpoints, you might want to know their current status over here. And then by sending HTTP requests, you can actually see that how responsive they are, what might be their response time, and how far they are doing. And if an API management platform has like really good uh, feature like setting up threshold values to monitor them and then setting alerts we can show that this endpoint is like working fine with a green status or like it's working slow with a yellow status and even at the worst case a red line to show that endpoint is down and for like knowing the requests more like which endpoint has what title uh, what kind of uh, a, a response time a responses or something you can always like select an endpoint from this uh, drop menu like the one that you, you saw there are the four specific endpoints for this API and the trend chart will change based on the endpoint that you select and then you can also probably click on these charts so that they can generate also the trend for showing how many of these responses been 2xs, 3xs, 4xs, or 5xx. And similarly, the API response chart would uh, uh, work like that way. And if you want to really know about what might be the problems your endpoint faced, you can always add a table about it and like have some dates uh, timestamps on it that th this endpoint faced a uh, 2xs request or 5xs request or 4xs request or it went down but that also depends on setting up threshold values that this is your response time and if it is more than this response time we consider your api to be down and Sorry about that uh, heading being hidden out from there. And if you are an a, uh, organization manager, your dashboard can be customized that what are your own APIs that you have developed and maintained and what are the APIs that you as your organization manager take care of or supervise it. There, here comes the fact that you just need to glance, uh, uh, glance it and to know everything is fine or not. And for the site admin, this is the thing that you can see in this section that there is this other APIs which you are not directly managing or taking care of, but having just a monitoring eye over them that how they are performing. And what would be my next work over here? I have started working with the dashboard monitoring to show like uh, how to show the alerts or based on what there can be monitoring factors for APIs to know their usage pattern or performance. And next time I would like to design this same thing for real-time APIs, which might be using a proxy broker like EMQ. But for that, I would need user interviews and stuff like that.
And last but not the least, alerts and notification. Because like you might be away not looking at your dashboard, but all of a sudden your API went down or somehow it spiked a very high response time and you need to know about this information in instant, perhaps by your email or by mobile or just by a blink of a sound. So that is also an important part of a dashboard. So I would be working on this thing. So this is mostly my work done for the dashboard thing of uh, an API management platform. So if you want to ask me any question, you can know. Does this measure uh, on the on the those APIs that are hosted by somebody running this dashboard, or does it measure also this kind of well, let's say external like APIs? Uh, your APIs first would need it to be connected to a proxy, because if your uh, uh, if your proxy if your API isn't there, then it might not we might not get the data which can be obtained from proxies to know that what have been your uh, what have been your API's number of requests and how much of them are either like specified calls like two access or four access or even to know about their use uh, response time of a particular request, how much time it takes in average. So first thing is that to connect your API to a proxy and then, then get those data and then visualize them in a dashboard-like view. Would proxy not be used independently? Possible, if the proxy actually has those information that can be configured from uh, that proxy itself then you get why not. And then if you have like a wish get to show that, show me also network delays or maybe generate a problem log out of it, it can be possible. But you need to know that the proxy that you are using, they provide that information. You mentioned that it is not a button to be configurable. Can you talk a little bit more about how could you configure it and what kind of things that you think that Uh, okay. Uh, I don't exactly have those wireframes over here, but as a dashboard, I mean, I mean, if you are more concerned with like uh, API response time of a particular API that you manage or have, you can always add it as a wish get. Like I, I believe from my studies or from my work that people might want to start up with a few things which are like essential. Like for example, REST API, you might want to know that if the uh, how what what can be the uh, what it, what are the response time, or what are the number of requests. So you can start with there, but then you can also have the option to add. Maybe I want to track the usage pattern for a specific timeline, or maybe I can customize the, that timeline, or even I want to have a widget which actually shows me status of a particular API. So th those things can be customizable and there can be a lot of options. And even like for a single API, you can have like this uh, three rows and the uh, three rows are like showing three endpoint specific statistics. Oh, but if you this is, uh, will the customer will be configuring their own dashboard or would that be something that they provided us? It, uh, it actually depends like how you want to monetize your dashboard perhaps like if it is kind of like this open source thing and you are giving a free trial start giving them like you can try out all the options for free in 30 days but and then if it is like uh, uh, but then if the 30 days when they are gone they they need to pay for them but also with a free trial you can give like this specific uh configurable things like that you can right now use API response time, API requests, but for using the endpoints, you might need to pay. It all depends on how you want your dashboard to be used or to be marketized. Well, in, 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 our, in our example, uh, some of the clients do not want to use this dashboard. And that's why we are building now the so-called flow API. You can get all the data from the proxies, different proxies to one API, get all the information you want 
and you can inject it to another dashboard system mm -hmm. that you probably have because you have a pipeline for development and you you have a way to monitor all your services and products and their status and everything and this api part is one block in there so mm -hmm. you use our api and inject the data in, in, in your own dashboard yeah. that's one way that would be one way to get also the online store from other systems so you can kind of ask your dashboard api if certain certain values are on the, on the threshold well, oh, yeah, in, in brief, it, it looks to me, sorry for your for marvelous UX work and everything, but we're <laughs> going towards this is to the situ situation that API management is more or more or less a middleware solution mm -hmm. and the data is used in multiple locations. Mm -hmm. So this kind of proof combination is probably for SaaS offering needed in there, but when it is uh, on-prem.